first slide. So the very first thing says, uh, let's look at this sign. It says, um, on this sign, what does total represent? And the thing to consider is consider each unit that you're adding. So this sign says population 582 um, feet above sea level, 20, 2150, and established 1951. So if we were talking units here, right, population, a unit for population would be people, right? So this would be people. And then the unit for feet above sea level would be feet. And then the unit for established in 1951, I assume that's a year. So that would be year. If we added all those up, that's what they do. They add all of them up to get a total of, uh, what is that? That's uh, 4883. But that would be 4883 people feet years. It's not really, doesn't really make sense, right? So these are not really um, things that you can add up because when you're working with um, units, you have to make sure that the units agree with each other, right? So you can add up all people, you can add up all feet, you can add up all years, but you can't add feet to people to years because that doesn't make any sense. So the purpose of this is to make sure that you understand the importance of unit and unit agreement. So um, that's why if there are is not unit agreement amongst the different uh, variables, then we have to convert so that the units agree with each other. Everything needs to be in the same unit, either that's meters, seconds, miles, hours. It doesn't matter what unit is in as long as all of the variables that you're working with in an equation have the same unit. And important to always designate that unit. So uh, list your unit. An answer without a unit gets a big fat what? If this was 4883, no unit, then you get 4883 what? Is that 4883 ducks? 4883 meters, miles, um, cars, people, we don't really know. So it's important to you to have unit agreement and to always list your units, both um, while you're working an equation and in your answer. All right, so here we go. First actual equation that you're going to work deals with the 2008 Olympic record held by Usain Bolt. Um, he ran 100 meters and... 9.69 seconds. It says determine his average speed in meters per second and then it says to convert that into miles per hour. So the first thing is the four steps. We're going to use the same four steps that we always that we have learned. We've, I've combined here the first two steps, the find and the given. Here's the formula. That's your relationship, right? That's to find the equation. I'm calling this the dimensional analysis step because sometimes that's going to inc include unit conversions. Sometimes that's just going to be plug and play, put the numbers into the formula. Sometimes it'll be a formula manipulation. So it'll be whatever analysis we need to, to do um, to, get the uh, to get the relationship or the equation ready for um, the solution. And then finally, the last one here is just to write your solution, including the proper units. Uh, a solution is not complete until you have the unit. Okay, so make sure we do that. So the find here is the speed. It says right here, speed. So that variable is S, big question mark for what that is. What they give us here is they give us 100 meters. That's a distance. And then they give us a time of 9.69 seconds. Our formula or equation is just going to be our speed equals distance divided by time. Not really any dimensional analysis needed on this one. It's more of a plug and play. So let's just substitute in the uh, numbers along with the units for the variables in the equation. And then use our calculators to solve that. And make sure you check me because my calculator could be wrong just as easily as yours but the answer I got was 10.3 and that is in meters per second everybody good ready to move on if not has to substitute to pause the video and 
All right, when everybody's ready, we will you go ahead and uh, change to the next one. It's important that you get these examples down and the format that we're going to use because this is the format we're going to expect you to use um, on all of the examples as well as the test. So um, that's why I'm going through these. So let's make sure that we spend the time today to get this right, and then you can just repeat that time and time again. Oh, what I forgot to do was convert, right? The second part. Somebody let me forget. I need to convert to miles per hour using this. So we'll plug that back in here to my dimensional analysis step. So the original unit was in meters per second. It tells me, awesomely enough, that one meter per second is equal to 2.44 miles per hour. I believe I've given you this shortcut already for, um, for unit conversions. If I haven't, then the uh, shortcut is it's find over given physics way of living it's a handy little rhyme it'll save you every time so that tells you which unit goes on the top in your conversion factor because I have two units here right I have meters per second and miles per hour so which one goes on the top well which one do they want you to find they want you to find miles per hour so we're gonna put the miles per hour on the top and the meters per second on the bottom and the one goes with that the 2.24 goes with that and then it's just a straight multiplication Right, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, reduce the fraction. So we end up with the 10.3 times 2.24. And that gives me 23 and some change miles per hour. So his speed is 23 miles per hour. Okay, questions on that? All right. We shall move on to the next one. All right, so this one says a funny car competition at Juliet Speedway in Illinois in 2004. Um, they had uh, John Force completed a run in a record time of 4.437 seconds. Determine his average velocity in miles per hour um, if the starting line to the finish line is a quarter mile. So there's a quarter mile so first of all what do they want us to find right here determine the velocity so they want us to find the velocity and then what do they give us well they give us a time of 4.43 seconds and they give us a distance of one quarter mile I'm gonna go ahead and convert that into a decimal so that's 0.25 miles the formula that we would use would be velocity equals the distance times the time or the change in position which in this case start is zero final the in final position is a quarter mile so the change of position is going to be this dis this displacement right here so it's just going to be velocity equals that displacement over the time and now we have to do a little bit of dimensional analysis not necessarily on the formula but on the units because they want the answer in miles over hours so I have to have miles over hours I have this in miles so I'm fine with the top unit the bottom unit is in seconds right so I need to get that into hours so I need to convert 4.437 seconds into hours so I need to multiply that by a conversion factor and I happen to know that there's 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour and 60 times 60 is 3600 so that means there's 3600 seconds in an hour since they want me to find it in hours that goes on the top it's find over given so the hours goes on top and the seconds goes on the bottom and so that's my conversion factor so that means multiply across the top and then across the bottom I'm gonna get 4.4 over 3600 which to reduce that you divide 4.437 divided by 3600 is going to give me a pretty small number so this will be equal to 0.00123 hours so that's my hours now I can just apply the hours and the miles to the formula and so my miles is 0.25 miles my time is now 0 0.00123 hours. 
my units are correct in miles per hour. Now I just have to do the math, reduce that fraction into a decimal. And I get 203 miles an hour. So his speed or velocity in this case would be 203 miles per hour. Questions on this one? Everybody good and ready to move forward? Oh, we're going to wait a second then. All right, now that everybody's ready, we'll move on to the next one. So now we're on to question seven. So I skipped a few. So make sure you move ahead to question seven. The ones in between are very similar to the ones I've already completed. So you'll complete those on your own. So you'll do four, five, and six on your own. Let's move over to seven. Seven says last, it says that uh, Kenny run fast. Kenny run fast, that's right, Kenny run fast. Uh, star of the cross country team during a recent race. Uh, Kenny averaged a speed of 5.8 meters per second for 12 minutes. And then Kenny averaged a speed of 6.1 meters per second for 7 minutes. Determine the total distance which Kenny ran during the 20 minutes. So, first of all, what are they asking us to find? It says, determine the total distance. So, they want us to find distance total. So I'm going to use a little subscript to indicate that that is a distance total. Not just a regular distance, it's going to be a distance total. So that means we're going to have multiple distances to add up in this case. Uh, the formula for that is going to be speed equals distance over time. I did that a little bit early because first I have to find what they give me. So they're giving me two different speeds and two different times. So I'll differentiate those by giving them a subscript as well. So I'll just take them in order. So the first speed that appears in the uh, question, I'll call speed one with a subscript. And that one is 5.8 meters per second. The second speed that appears in the question as I read it, I'll call speed two. And that is 6.1 zero meters per second and I'll do the same thing with the times the first time that appears is time one so I'll call that T subscript one 12 minutes 12.9 minutes and then the next one that appears we'll call T2 and that one is 7.1 minutes as I already indicated you're going to use the formula for speed which equals distance over time you are going to have to do a little manipulation of this formula to solve for the distance. To do that, you multiply both sides by time. That gets rid of the time here, and it sets distance up as speed times time. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to do speed times time. You're going to do it for both this S1 and the T1, and then the S2 and the T2. That's going to give you the two distances, and then you're going to add those two distances together to get your total distance. So we're going to do that twice. But before we can do that, we have to get um, unit conversion or a unit conversion happening so that we can get a unit agreement. Because here in my speeds, I have meters per second. So, and in my times, I have minutes. Minutes and seconds don't agree, so I have to convert those minutes into seconds. So I'll do those two real quick. So my conversion would be 12.9 minutes times the conversion factor. I want to find it in seconds, so that's going to go on top. There are 60 seconds in one minute. The minutes will cancel out, so I'll take the 12.9 times 60. That gives me 740, 774 seconds. Do the same thing for my second time, 7.1. And do that math, 7.1 times 60, 426 seconds. All right, so now I have the seconds I need. I'll plug them into this formula real quick, two times. So I'll take the first speed here, which is eight or 5.8 times my 
T1, 774, to get my D1 here. We'll call it D1. So 8 times 744, or excuse me, 5.8 times 744, 774, is 4,489. 4,489. Now we'll solve for the D2 using speed 2. 6.1 times 426. And that gives me 2,580, or 2,599. 2,599. Add those two together. Plus 4,489. And I get my total distance of 7,088. So there's my total D, 7,088. 7,088, and that's in meters. You could also express that as 7.088 kilometers. So he ran a little bit more. He ran a little over 7K in about 20 minutes. That's a pretty good pace. Um, but not undoable for those who um, have actually ran cross country. All right, questions on that one, how we did it. Yeah, second distance is 2599. Sorry about that. I'm trying to make my writing a little clearer. 2599. All right, any other questions? Okay, then let's move on to the next one. Okay, number eight. Number eight asks us to basically use this chart right here, and I can tell already that my chart is backwards from yours. So let me fix mine. There we go. I think that probably matches up with yours now. Uh, let's see, that's a four. All right, so the question, and then there's a multiple questions about this chart. Looks like the first one says calculate the average speed for both cars. Um, so we'll call this one, this one I believe is the red car. And then this one's like a, the blue car on your handout. So red car. What they give us is they give us a time and they give us position. They ask us for speed. So they're going to ask us for speed. And this is the, it doesn't match up. Okay, 69, 6, 2, 1. All right, 6, 2, 1. Here we go, 69, 6, 2, 1. Better? All right, cool. So they still give us the time, um, and the time for this one is 0 to 4. So our change in time, or our delta t, in this case, is going to be 4. Our time is going to be four, right? So, and then they give us a position, which we could, we start at zero, go to 24. So our distance would be 24 meters. And this is in seconds. Our formula here is just going to be distance over time. So for the red car, we would just do 24 over Four, and I believe so that is going to make the speed of our red car speed subscript red and I think it's going to be six meters per second likewise the blue car distance wise it looks like it's going to start at one or start at 16 and go to one so its distance is going to be um, 15 right well that sucks 16 is much easier math but so be it so blue car so speed of the blue is going to be 15 divided by the same 4 and that's going to give me a non-whole number of 3.75 so speed for the blue equals 3.75 and these are both positive numbers even though this one's going backwards because it's asking for speed and remember speed does not have a direction but then the very next part of this one asks you for 
velocity. You kind of sort of knew that was coming. So velocity, and that's what we're really looking for in this, is so that you understand the difference between the two. The velocity, we will have to take into account the direction of that change. And this one is moving positively, right, because its start is 0, its finish is 24. If I took final minus initial, I'd have 24 minus 0, so that's going to be a plus 24. So that one, the speed and velocity are going to be the same. This one, on the other hand, right, it starts at 16 goes to 1. So this change is negative, right? So that velocity is going to be negative. Um, so as far as in terms of velocity, the formula is the change in position over the change in time. Change in time is still four seconds for both of them. But the change in position, so the delta x for the blue car is negative 15 meters. Delta x for the red car is still 24. That's positive, so that's not a problem. So for the... So for the velocity for the red, you're still going to be 6 meters per second on that one. That's positive. But the velocity for the blue, subscript B, is going to be negative 3.75 meters per second. And it's negative because, again, it starts out at 15. The motion is to the left, to the left. Everything negative to the left. Now, now it's official. I'm, I'm on video singing that song. All right, and then C says, uh, which car is traveling at a constant velocity and which car is or slash was non-constant? And defend your answer. So, which car is traveling at a constant velocity and which car was or is at a non-constant velocity? Defend your answer. Trick question, right? Because both of these cars are traveling at a constant velocity. Right? There's no indication that either of these cars are accelerating. Right? So both of these cars are traveling at a constant velocity. And so the answer is both. And your defense is that if you look, the change in position um, is the same all the way across this. So there you go. Moving on to the next one. Here it asks you to interpret two people running a race. So this is a girl versus boy race, number nine. Girl versus boy race. And these aren't really math. These are just um, qualitative observations. Uh, well, I guess a couple of them are quantitative when you get to D&E. But the first ones are qualitative. Who is faster? A or B? Who is faster? A. And the reason, the defense is slope. Slope is steeper, right? There you go. So A and it's all about the slope. Slope is greater. And who runs further? Defend your answer. So that one we have to look at the position change, right? So A starts here at zero, ends at looks like about 85. So their change of position is zero to 85. So that's 85 meters. So A goes 85 meters. B starts at 20. Looks like they go to about 55. So 20 to 55, that is a change of only 35 meters. So who runs further? A, because 85 is longer than 35. All right, who has a head start? Defend your answer. B, because if you look... A has to start here at 0, B starts at 20. So 20 is ahead of 0, so B has a head start. All right, so it's B, and it's because they start at 20. Whereas A starts at 0. All right, how fast is the girl running at the 6 second mark? And they give you a six-second mark to kind of throw you off, but truth of the matter is this is constant velocity because this is a straight line. This is a straight line with a slope. So you could, you could say six seconds. I could say three seconds. I could say seven seconds. It doesn't matter um, because she's going to be running the same speed on, at all of these time intervals. So you're just going to do rise over run to determine the speed. We already know that the rise was 85. The run is 10 seconds. So that's pretty easy math. Her speed is 8.5 meters per second. 
And likewise, the boy, same thing is true for him. He is at constant velocity, so they give you a time interval of two seconds. Doesn't matter what they said there. Um, we already know there's this rise of 35 meters. Run is still 10 seconds. So his speed is 3.5 meters per second. Much slower than the girl. And then finally, is there a time interval when their speeds are equal? Defend your answer. I would love to know if somebody thinks there's a time interval that they are equal. Anybody? Yes, no. Time interval that they're equal? Yes. I heard yes. Everybody agree? Yes, there's a time interval that they're equal? Anybody disagree? And what is that time interval? Right here, right? Number one missed question on the test the number one missed question on the test students for years and years and years have all said they're at the equal speed at that intersection what determines speed on a position versus time graph slope do they ever have an equal slope no so the answer to this question is no they are never equal in speed But some of you will still want to put that intersection. It's so attractive to you as an answer choice. But no, they never have an equal speed. Just so happens to be the time for which they were at the same position at the same time. And the only reason that occurred is because um, the guy started 20 meters ahead of the girl. This was the, basically the time when the girl caught the guy when she made up for his lead and then she passed him, right? So the answer here is no. And the reason is, again, slope. Slope is never the same. Highlight it, underline it, asterisk it. It's the number one missed question on the test. Don't let that be you. And last question we're going to cover. Everything else is going to be on you. This is the last one we'll cover together as a class. And we won't cover all of it because there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, quite a few of them. We'll cover the first several. Um, cause this looks very similar to a test question, so it's kind of an important question to make sure you understand. All right, so here's a position versus time graph for, multiple, or for a combination uh, of motion. So you got several motions here, right? You got a positive velocity, you got rest, you got negative velocity, you got rest, you got positive velocity, and then you got negative velocity. So you got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six different types of velocities. First question asks you, describe in terms of the time positions, the time stamps, the two places where the car has stopped. So what are the two time stamps that the car stopped? First one here is here to here, right? Anytime that line is flat, that car stops. So that would be roughly from four seconds to six seconds. So if we were answering A, you'd have from four seconds to six seconds. And then the second one would be the other flat spot. And that looks like from about eight seconds to 10. So this is from eight to 10 seconds. And there's your answer there. You're just looking for the flat spots. Calculate the total distance walked by uh, the director during this 16 seconds. So here we go. Total distance, you're just adding up all the distances that he walked. Does not matter the direction of the distance, right? It's just distance, not displacement. Very important, just distance. So we just look here. This is the distances that he's walked. So during this first time thing, he starts at zero, ends at eight. So this one he does eight meters so we'll just keep a running total here here he doesn't go any right he's at he's at rest so this one's zero then we go down to here he goes from eight down to four so it's negative but it's still a distance so it still counts so in terms of that we're gonna keep adding it together here again is at zero here he goes from four back up to the eight so that's another four and then finally, he goes from the 8 all the way back down to the 0. So that's another 8. Add those all together. Total distance, 
24 meters. Nobody got how we did that? Just keep in mind, total distance doesn't matter direction. Although C, calculate the resulting displacement. Now it does matter direction. And you could certainly go, well, this is positive, this is negative, this is positive, this is negative. You could add all the positives, add all the negatives, or you could just look at where he started and where he ended, and they're exactly at the same spot. He starts and ends at zero. Final minus initial is going to give you a total displacement of zero, right? So you could do his position final minus his position initial. His position final is zero. His position initial is zero. So his total displacement is zero. And subsequently, the average speed. So this is, again, as long as you get these two correct, then the speed and the velocity should be pretty easy to calculate. Speed is distance divided by time. The time is 16 seconds, right? So, six, so 24 is the distance. Speed, distance, divided by time. 24 is the distance. We decided that was right there. The time is 16 seconds. So we do that math. 24 divided by 16, that gives us a velocity of 1.5, or a speed, I'm sorry, of 1.5 meters per second. Velocity, on the other hand, is change in position over change in time. Change in time is still 16 seconds, but the change in position right here is zero. So this one is zero divided by 16, or zero meters per second. Very different, very different velocity in that case. And then I will let you handle um, F and G, asking which is the fastest speed and the slowest speed. That should be easy enough. Slope, 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 right? It's all about the slope. And then um, where is the velocity negative? And obviously you're looking for a negative slope. And then finally, just uh, number 11, you're going to write a question. You can use any of these as a, an example um, to write an interesting question. Give your solution to your question in terms of the four steps with the proper answer. All right, questions on the rest of that. Y'all think you can handle it? Got about 14 minutes or so till 55 after. All right, the rest of the class period, you have to work on that or the um, graphing thing if you haven't finished that. All right, that's it, and have a great weekend, y'all. I will see you on Tuesday.